Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. Today I'm going to show you how to quantize MIDI in Reaper either through the MIDI editor or through the track control panel. In the case that you don't know what quantizing means or in the case that you want to know more about MIDI editing in Reaper, I'll be right back after the intro. Here we are. I have recorded a little MIDI track for you, which is intentionally bad, is what I would say if I could actually play the piano well enough. I cannot, so I just sit down and recorded a little tune for you, which is really, really boring and bad, and especially bad played. But that's how I usually play the piano if I'm unprepared and absolutely not warmed up. Um, so this is kind of bad. And quantizing in this case means that we want to fit our MIDI notes exactly to the grid. Because what happens if you want to print a score on a piece of paper, it's not just a row of notes, like note after note, but you have a grid where the notes are placed so that the players know which note to play at which exact timing. And right now, as I've played the tune, the tune is absolutely out of sync, which you will be able to hear by following the metronome. And quantizing means that we take the notes and make them snap to the grid in a certain way that we can freely define. And I will show you how to do this in just a second, but here's the tune with the metronome turned off. And afterwards I will turn it on and you will be able to hear that it's absolutely out of sync. So I was already kind of, um, I had a mistake in there, which I tried to clean up, but I didn't clean it up entirely because that's part of the demonstration here. I um, intentionally was playing some notes off, which will now be snapped to the grid as soon as we quantize, which is probably not what I want. But quantizing isn't a one tool fits all sizes kind of thing to do. As soon as you do that, you will introduce other mistakes, which we have to correct manually, but you will reduce the amount of work that you have to do by hand. So this is what quantizing does. It tries to solve issues. It usually turns up other issues that you hadn't before, but it reduces the amount of issues that you have to solve by hand. Here's the tune with the metronome turned on, and now be aware of the bad playing that I've done here. So what I usually do right now is, especially the second part, I just replay it. I just drop it, delete it, and just re-record it. However, I don't want to do this because it's my intention to show you what quantizing is. So here's a quick and easy way to quantize via the track control panel. So if you don't want to go into the MIDI editor, here's the quick and easy way to do this. You have the control shift and the number row to select your grid size. This piece should be mainly in eighths. We will try to quantize it to eighths. So what this means is that every note will be an eighth note and the editor will look at the note positions and quantize it to the next eighth that is in range. So for example, if we have a note offset from an eighth like by five to 10% or something like that, it would snap it to the eighth that is closest to the note. Um, if we set it to quarters, then we do the same with quarters. If we set it to 16th, then we quantize it to 16th. Let's just see what happens. Let's press Control Shift 8 while in the track control panel. By the way, this is the main window that you have and that you can use up and down over to scroll those tracks and everything. That's the TCP, the track control panel. We can press Control Shift 8 here. Now we can select the item. Great. And we can press Control Shift Q. Master volume 0.00. This, by the way, the output with the master volume is <laughs> kind of weird, but it should have quantized it. Let's find out. Hmm. 
this isn't half bad. I would have expected it to be less efficient. There are a few notes which snapped into the wrong direction, right? We need to move them manually now. But apart from that, the quantizing worked quite well. Now, if you want to solve this, this misquantization bugs that occurred here, you'd need to go into the media editor and edit the notes manually. Now, you can also quantize within the media editor and kind of solve the issues while in there anyway. So let's undo this. Undo SWS slash FNG. Quantize item positions and MIDI note positions per grid. Now we select the item one, one, zero. and we press Control Alt E to go into the MIDI editor. MIDI take. Great. Here we go. Left and right arrow will scroll through the notes. 20% one note. 0% one note. 20% one note. 87% one note. B246% one note. 92% one note. You can see here they are absolutely unquantized, right? This one is 92%, although it's meant to sit on 100%. This one is on 37%, although it's meant to sit on 50%, and so on and so forth. A bit of swing isn't wrong in most cases. Like if you're a really good player, then you can most likely get through without quantizing stuff. But I am absolutely not a good player. I'd have to train like five, six, seven, eight times to get a tune played in correctly and without having to quantize it, because it's just the human touch. Like, we aren't perfect. We will never hit everything perfectly on the grid. Um, so some people say that quantizing stuff is going to sound inhuman and unnatural. Other people will say that the fear of unnaturality comes from other things, but not the quantization to the grid. Um, some people would just add a bit of humanization to this stuff, although humanization algorithms like randomization are actually not humanizing stuff because humans are not precise enough to actually fit to the grid but they are also not random enough to be random like the computer would be um so yeah this is actually a kind of interesting discussion i usually go with quantization um and try to make it sound human enough by by doing other things to the song then again i'm not as good as a composer so yeah this this really depends on how you like to do things now this is obviously not quantized and the great thing in the media editor is you don't need to quantize everything remember back in the tcp when we selected the item and pressed Control shift q the action will always quantize everything that is within this media item however if we are in the midi editor we can quantize single notes or particular set of notes without quantizing everything. So we can select specific notes with shift in the left and right arrow keys. And afterwards, we can just press Q to quantize them to the grid. Please note that the grid set in the TCP and the grid set in the media editor are different. So if you have the grid set to an eighth outside of the media editor, like in the TCP, the grid won't be set to an eighth within the media editor. You always have to do this manually by pressing only the number row without control shift in this case, Y in the media editor. So for example, we have to press eight here. Grid eight. Now the grid is set to eight. We can select all the notes, which will be exactly the same thing that we did before. Um, so press control A. 53 events selected. And then we press Q. Quantize events dialog strength, percent settings, combo box use grid collapsed. So this will open a settings dialog, which has several settings. Let's go through them step by step. The first combo box, we allow us to change what we want to quantize to. Default setting is use grid settings, which is exactly the behavior that we had within the TCP2. Let's see what other options we have here. Manual. Manual means that you can set the quantization settings within this dialog and entirely ignore the grid. Let's say that you want to quantize to the grid, which is what you want to do most of the time. Use grid. Now let's tab. Bypass checkbox not checked. You can bypass that. Quantize. Combo box selected notes collapsed. You can quantize selected notes, which is what I've already shown you. You can select specific notes and we just quantize them. You can also set it to all notes. All notes, which is the exact same behavior than in the TCP. All events. And all events we not just quantize notes, but all the other CC lane events that can be within the MIDI event because you toggled the mod wheel or you controlled the pitch wheel or you had some aftertouch going on or whatever, all of that will be quantized. Selected events. And selected events is the same thing as with notes, but all events. Now we will go back to selected notes. All selected notes. Great. 
Combo box position and note end collapsed. Position and note end. What else do we have? Position. Only the position. Position and note length. And note length. Note end only. Note and only. Note length only. Note length only. Position and note end. So these are some specific settings, right? If we quantize position and note end, then the entire node will be shuffled along um, into a specific direction so that it's snapped to the grid. So if a node is an eighth node and it starts at 0%, then it will end at 50%, right? So it will become an eighth node, although it might be shorter right now. Position. If we only quantize position, then the node end won't be set to an eighth node, but it will start at the position of an eighth node. All the other things are quite similar, although I have to admit that I'm never using those. I should experiment with them a bit. Um, I'm not entirely sure about the difference. Obviously, node end will only properly quantize the end of the node and will not consider the position. So if you have a short node, the end will be snapped to the grid, but the beginning won't. So it will be kind of loosely hanging around. Um, might be useful in some cases. It's usually not for what I compose most of the time. So I will remain at position at node end, which is the default, and it usually works for me. Quantize strength slider 100. So quantize strength means that it's 100% fitting to the grid. If you want it to be a bit loose, then you can reduce that. When you quantize, or at least when I want to quantize, 100% is the way to go, because I want it to snap to the grid perfectly. Edit selected 100. Selection removed. So all the time we've got a slider, we also got an input box, right? Fix overlaps, checkbox checked. Fix overlaps, they will cut nodes down if they overlap each other. Commit button. And commit is submitting the quantization. Let's commit. Space, press, OK button. And now we press OK. Space, MIDI. Great. Now let's play. Which is exactly what we already had. Right now, there's an easier and quicker way to achieve this. We don't need to press Q all the time and go through the settings dialog. We can press undo here, undo video. and now we can just select all the nodes 53. and press Alt Shift Q, which won't give us any speech feedback, but do the same thing. It's literally meant let's toggle on F12 and let's press Alt Shift Q. Notes using last quantized dialog settings. So it will quantize the nodes using last quantize dialog settings. So if you set up your quantization settings once and for all, like you are really happy with what it does, then you always just need to press Alt Shift Q to quantize to the settings that you configured last in your quantization settings. If you however want to change those, feel free to press Q. You also don't need to quantize, you just open the settings with that. Let's check out the action again. Quantize. Quantize. So you can also just press OK without pressing commit. Commit will apply it. OK will just save the settings. So you don't need to apply a quantization if all you want to do is actually change the settings, right? So that's the two ways that you can quantize your MIDI. Now let's take a look at how to fix the issues that we have here. Shortcut help off. Let's go to the first note. Beat, beat. Great. Beat through one, beat one through note. Beat through one note. Beat one through note. Isn't this awesome? A four, C5, one beat. We can now move that along. 50% C5. Great. Zero. So we are actually fixing the intro here. Ooh, that's the second one, right? Uh huh. That's the second one. So what do I do here? I actually select the notes that are wrong by using left and right arrow, and then I can go through the chord notes, which are now chord notes, although they aren't, with the up and down arrow. G a four, C five, a four, G four, one beat. And then I can move them along with the numpad. Four and six, we move them along the grid. Four, we move them backward. Six, we move them forward. So what's going on here? Zero, big zip, big zip. Okay, and we just toggle off at VDA here for a second. Speech mode off. Ooh, that's the next one.
Awesome. That's the tune. Let's go to the beginning and play it. A really simple and boring tune, right? But now it's quantized. And if you compare it to the initial state, that was actually badly played, but it's still not sounding too bad now that it's actually probably quantized, right? So that's all you need to know about quantizing MIDI. It's not going to make your song perfect. If it isn't like a great tune, then it's not going to be a great tune after quantizing it, but it's absolutely making it like more snap to the grid. You can now convert it probably into a score if you have the dedicated software. Reaper can do this, but it's not going to look great and awesome. You will always have to optimize by hand, fixing some notes that were really off the grid. And uh, afterwards, your tune is going to sound great. If you are a really good piano player, then I'd always recommend you to play it in and not touch it anymore if you don't need to, because it would sound a bit more human, right? That's what you usually want to do if people playing it live in the orchestra, it won't be quantized anyway, because humans are not perfect. And that's all. Thank you for watching. If you've got any questions regarding MIDI, quantizing, Reaper related stuff, anyway, let me know in the comment section below the video. If you enjoyed what I've demonstrated here, like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to get notified about new videos coming out each Monday and sometimes even in between. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.